Our project is the music experience and its influence on cognitive function measured with EEG. The P300, which is measured using electroencephalography, is an event-related potential or ERP component that is analyzed with amplitude, or the magnitude of a wave, and latency, or the timing of a wave. This ERP component relates to operations such as attention, context updating, and memory processes. George and Coach investigated the P300 using the oddball paradigm task in musicians and non-musicians. They concluded that the shorter latencies and larger amplitudes of the P300 found in musicians with long-term music training correlated with better performance in working memory. Moreno and his colleagues also looked at P3 waves as well as N2 waves in musicians and bilinguals. They utilized a visual go-no-go -no -go task in order to evaluate how quickly and accurately these groups respond to infrequent no-go trials. The results determined that musicians and bilinguals exhibit increased amplitudes in N2 and P3 ERP components in no-go trials, demonstrating that these groups are able to detect competing responses and inhibit a conflicting response quickly relative to controls. The Brief Music Experience Questionnaire is a 53-item self-report measure that examines different reactions to music. In particular, the Brief MEQ analyzes two principal factors which include subjective and physiological reactions to music as well as active involvement. There are six subscales, three of which will be employed in this experiment. This study aims to assess P3 ERP components from the visual oddball and go-no-go -no -go tasks in musicians and non-musicians. It was hypothesized that musicians would elicit larger amplitudes and earlier peak latencies for the visual go-no-go -go task and for the visual oddball paradigm. Musicians' responses to years and proficiency playing an instrument from a basic information questionnaire were predicted to show significant correlations with innovative musical aptitude, commitment to music, and reactive musical behavior components of the Brief Music Experience Questionnaire. The sample size of the EEG component of this project was four participants, with two individuals being musicians and two being non-musicians. The sample size for the questionnaire analyses, which was distributed virtually using Qualtrics in order to comply with COVID-19 regulations, was 120. The mean age was 20 years old, with the mean age playing a first instrument being 10 years old, and average years playing an instrument being 5 years. The materials utilized were an EEG amplifier and active power battery, which measured the ERP components. The EEG consisted of 32 electrodes. The visual oddball was one of the measures tested. 565 trials were presented to participants with 80 deviant trials. Four blocks of trials were presented for 100 milliseconds per trial, alternating between standard and deviant stimuli. The other task that was examined using EEG was the go-no-go. No go. 576 trials were presented to participants, 153 of those being no-go. Each stimulus was presented for 186 milliseconds, with a white shape representing the go trials presented 75% of the time, and a purple shape representing the no-go trials presented 25% of the time. There are six subscales that make up the brief MEQ, three of which are of interest to this study. The three measures are as follows. Commitment to music, which refers to the amount of time an individual dedicates to music. Innovative musical aptitude, which relates to how an individual would rate themselves with regard to their ability to perform musically in front of others as well as their ability to write music, and reactive musical behavior, which refers to reactions such as humming or dancing along with a song. The items were measured with a 5-point Likert scale of 1, meaning not likely, and 5 being most likely. Finally a basic information questionnaire was used to collect several demographic variables such as age, education, first instrument, average years playing an instrument, proficiency in playing that instrument, as well as questions regarding their vocal training. Correlations were found between years playing an instrument for innovative and reactive musical behavior. Additionally, innovative musical aptitude was correlated with proficiency playing an instrument. Musicians had faster reaction times for oddball and go-no-go, -go, Higher accuracy was seen for oddball for musicians, but not for the go-no-go. -go. Regarding ERP amplitudes, highest amplitudes were found for the bilingual musician in the oddball compared to a bilingual and a musician. Similar latencies were observed across the three pilot participants, with the earliest peak latencies for the bilingual, then the bilingual musician, and finally the musician. Also, Highest amplitudes were found for the bilingual musician on the no-go ERP P3 compared to the musicians and non-musicians. 
Similar latencies were observed across the four pilot participants, with the earliest peak latencies for the non-musicians, then the musician, and finally the bilingual musician. According to the results, the experience of being both a bilingual and musician produced the largest P3 amplitudes, but delayed P3 peak latencies during both the oddball paradigm task and the go-no-go. No go. Moreover, our questionnaire results suggested that the more proficient one believes themselves to be in their musical experience, the more innovative their musical aptitude, the more reactive they are to music, and the greater the proficiency in their instrument, the higher score of musical aptitude. Due to the spread of the COVID-19 virus, we encountered a few limitations, such as being limited with regards to EEG testing, leaving only a small pilot sample to run data analyses on. We were not able to compare groups of musicians and non-musicians on a larger scale, and were only able to compare the participants individually on their amplitudes and latencies. Future directions for this type of project would be a larger sample size, as that would allow for more thorough analyses across all measures. It would also be valuable to look at other environmental factors such as musical study habits of participants, as well as hours spent practicing in a group or band setting.